there's been an issue recently that uh, people are concerned about because once every four years, you're going to get a ballot that's for a partisan primary, presidential primary, which applies only for the Democrats and the Republicans. And one of the reasons why people don't like this is that on the outside of the ballot, you, should, you identify which party the ballot it applies to. Now, in Washington State, we don't register by party affiliation. So theoretically, there's no guarantee that anybody would know which party you would vote for. So you only get one ballot, which has all the Democrat candidates and all the Republican candidates, just for the presidential primary. So people get frustrated with this because maybe you're not a Republican, maybe you're not a, a Democrat, maybe you just choose to vote on one or the other just for the heck of it. However, the way um, the frustration that people are having is that requirement to mark partisan affiliation on the outside. They only do that during the partisan primary, presidential primary process. It only happens once every four years. Is it a scam? It is kind of a little bit because really both political parties want this. They want to create easy mailing lists. It really just makes life easier for them for fundraising or for tracking purposes, knowing which party somebody's self-identified with at, at a given period of time. And so that's why the parties lobby to get the legislature, or actually Secretary of State in this case, to do this. Uh, it doesn't mean that they track all the rest of your ballots by party. They don't. But if you do decide to participate in the partisan um, presidential primary, you will be identifying yourself, you out yourself, at least for that session, as to which party you're choosing to pick a candidate for. So that's how it works. That's why it's going on. Uh, it doesn't make it good, but it's not particularly bad, and it would be easy to change because, frankly, they don't need to do that on the outside of the ballot, and I would recommend as a policy change to eliminate the partisan identification on the outside of the ballot. Dan, have there been any people, independent or Democrat, that you've actually talked to about this? Yeah, I mean, generally Democrats don't seem to care about it so much. Independents certainly do because they'll say, hey, this time I wanted, last time I voted in the Democrat primary, this time I voted in the Republican primary. Also, what happens is some people choose to vote in the other party's primary, which we allow because we have this open primary process in our state, and um, they do that to mess up the other uh, party. Republicans do it, and Democrats both do it. There's no, nobody's innocent of that. People do it all the time. And so a lot of times then they don't like it because they get caught up in the other guy's mailing or a party's mailing list they may not want to be on. So that's usually when I hear people frustrated about it. It's usually because of that. And then there was one question as a second one. One. Yeah. So in Iowa caucuses where I actually covered that in mm -hmm. ironically in Nikki Haley's HQ of all things. Oh yeah. I actually uh, came face to face with one of their controversies because they're safely equivalent high V, which is a big grocer. Right. Uh, basically not not unrelated, but when the collection was made for Iowa's voter ID yeah, yeah. laws and so on, they tried to contest that by saying, well, you guys are collecting it informally in, in a non-formal manner by just putting in a high v bag or in a bucket that come that's literally for, like, storing things in. So there was basically a question of, what's your take on other states' ID laws, such as Iowa's, during the recent caucusing? When you say ID, you're talking about more identification of party affiliation. Is that what you're talking about? Um, for, um, so in order in Iowa to be in the primary, they actually required voter... They actually require drivers the actual ID. Oh, oh they required ID to participate. And primary. so well, they contested okay. that because of the nature that they collected the ballots themselves at the the precinct. Okay, and sites. then they would go and deliver them. Is that yeah. what they would do? Okay. And then they complained about it in the media front about it because it was being collected in high V bags like the paper bags or right. or more it wasn't secure form. is what you're saying well supposedly less secure by yeah, yeah, their yeah. argument but only because it was taken not by hand into a nice shiny box but in something because they're snowed in oh, there gotcha. was a I, yeah i mean i like the id for voting i always have most people do whenever you see these surveys democrat or republican actually there's less support for it in the democrat side but there's generally majority support for uh, photo uh, photo id for voting uh, i would prefer that uh washington state theoretically has that i'm gonna say theoretically it's a quote because and technically when you register the first time to vote you're supposed to show id but frequently they don't require that they don't actually enforce it and the problem is once you're in the system your ballot lives your your at least your voter registration seems to live forever so uh, i think that we would benefit in our state and this is a problem with federal law not state law 
uh, we would benefit in fact if we uh, modified the voter uh, motor voter reg um, voter registration law to basically require you to come back and re-register every four years. I think that'd be a good fix. Um, it's not a perfect fix. It's just a better system than what we have currently in our state. Then what do you take to the controversy then that was at the Iowa caucus where they tried to denounce the laws by talking about the lack of formality within the collection process? Yeah, I mean, the one issue you're going to have and uh, with collection of ballots is that you need to have uh, basically um, an audit trail to know what's happened to the ballots and who what who's had control of the ballots. This has actually been a controversy in Washington State um, on a less obvious level uh, up in San Juan County a couple years ago because you had uh, people who would get the ballots on the different islands and they'd have to catch a ferry. And so what they would do is they'd bring the ballots back to their home and nobody knows what's happening to the ballots when it's there, when it's in their home. That was actually an issue that came up. And so they, they had to change their informal process of hauling ballots around from Lopez Island and uh, Shaw Island and uh, Orcas Island when they were bringing back to Friday Harbor. And so um, they ended up supposedly solving that with a, a secure, sealed bag system that was a little bit more formal. So I, I don't think there's any problem with fixing those and making them more formal, more secure, multiple people observing the ballots at all times. It's chain of custody. It's standard chain of custody. And if there's one thing our voter system needs, is far better chain of custody.